Welcome to our last panel, but this is not the last time we're speaking. This is the Global Lens, the Women Executive Leadership. The whole day we've had fantastic women. I had to realize that there were 12 CEOs, but Dr. C reminded me that this 12 plus one, so I, I forgot to count myself, <laughs> that we are uh, all fantastic women here and that everything is, is going to be here. And we also have Katie. I just don't see her yet. Oh, here she, we have her. And there's Katie. There's Katie. <laughs> Hi. Hey, Katie. I think with a, with a fantastic group, we have, most of us have met in person or just online. And Katie and I, we have been working on a super production. I said yesterday, maybe it's easier to organize an event in person than online because online you're alone. I don't know. I need to hear from you, but we have Janine in Mexico. We have Katie in Salta in Argentina and Lucy in beautiful LA. So another action packed event, 45 minutes to talk with fantastic women and female CEOs. Sometimes we don't pet pat each other too much on the back. So Janine, buenos dias, buenas tardes. Introduce <laughs> yourself. And before she introduces herself, she's the one who organized with her team last year, two days of fantastic conversations. I think I got inspired to do it. Only one day, only four panels. But Janine, you did it last year, Women, Leadership and Beyond. So introduce yourself, we wanna hear from you. Thank you, Susan, good afternoon. Good morning or good night, wherever you are. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. And before to introduce myself, happy International Women's Day to everyone. Who I am, I am Janine Ricalde. I am living in the Southwest of Mexico, Merida, Yucatan, Mexico. I began like, in my own company two years ago. And really it's been, it has been tough, but it's been challenging. And I love this time that I am living because also I am learning to reinventing myself, not just as to pass from an executive to an entrepreneur, also to adapt to live with the pandemic time, post-pandemic time, and this new reality, because MR Global is focused in training. So also we have to reinvent the training in virtual basis, no? So what MR Global does is to train people through virtual basis in all human resources, leadership uh, to support all the new leaders that are coming from many companies in Mexico, no? Mm -hmm. Well, we need more of you. I think I said that multiple times throughout the day. It's about taking a risk and start your own company. And you said it from an executive to an entrepreneur. It's a huge difference. We will hear more about that. Lucy, yeah. you're another entrepreneur. I try. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Susan. First of all, I, we're all going to say the same thing. Congratulations on Women's International Day and also on your big win because I believe the EU has finally passed or approved the be able to see the uh, pay of men and other women. Mm -hmm. I think it's very important. I don't know if that's going to solve the problem, <laughs> you know, if that's going to solve it. But I mean, we're taking baby steps and, and we're getting close. And I think that being able to reveal and know what others make is mm -hmm. wonderful. It's going to help us negotiate. But back to who I am, my name is Lucy Rivero. I'm the CEO of Translations for All. Um, the name of the company explains itself. And what I've evolved into doing, because as you said, Suzanne, with this crazy thing that we're doing right now is that everyone is evolving. Katie, you, Janine, me, you know, we started doing one thing, <laughs> right? And then um, either the years that passed or the time and, and the, our experience move us into a different level. A year ago, I was woken up seriously by women leadership and beyond mm -hmm. um, 
not only you, Suzanne, but Janine and other women, it didn't matter what part of the world we were in. We, we had the same needs that we feel, you know, we are 50% of the population yet, you know, there's a hundred women in Congress, but there's 500 possibilities. Mm-hmm. So I really took this in as something that is my own. And uh, even though Janine started this, I am right there as her vice president behind her. <laughs> and, and this has uh, become for me now in my age, bigger than translations for all. It is very, very important to, to help lead and open and make space for the new women coming up. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank you. We also need more of you. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. And Katie from South. Hi, Dark. everybody. Hi. Yes, a big thank you to Suzanne. A big congratulations to everybody. Congratulations to the previous panelists. Um, I wish I could have joined more sessions, but you know, we all have to do what we have to do. Uh, my name is Katie Watt. I am the CEO of English Consulting Services. I am originally from the United States. I've been living in Salta, Argentina for 11 years now, which is kind of crazy to say. Um, and I think just like most of our businesses, um, my entrepreneurial pursuits kind of came out of a, a, a time of necessity, a time that I had to evolve as a person. Um, and it is dedicated to any sort of communication support in English for professionals, students, uh, people who need to do business in English, people who want to go abroad to study or to work. Um, so resume services, um, test preparation, pretty much anything, which is why I call it consulting. It's not teaching anymore. That's a good way to look at it, right? Yeah, wonderful. And you mentioned something, it was out of necessity. This is important, right? So I, I mentioned that before, I lost my job. And then I was like, what do I do now? I need to support myself. I need to make some money. And then one thing led to the next. And Janine, you mentioned transition from an executive to an entrepreneur. What is it? What, what is easy and what are challenges for you? And we're well, all here reason- for each other. I think that's what I learned from Janine. <laughs> Janine obviously says, we're here with you. We're here with you. We're also here with you, Janine. Thank you, Susan. I think the easiest part is the knowledge, the experience that I have uh-huh. in human resources, leadership. But the challenging part is to start to think like an entrepreneur, start to act as an entrepreneur. I know that in the past, I used to be for my company, and now I had to be for my team. And not just to think in myself, I also think in my team, no? What is the best? And making decisions, making the things work. Uh, even the, the time we are living is a challenging time with a lot of things to, to accomplish. Uh, Here, for example, in Mexico, where there are a lot of gaps in human resources. Mm -hmm. Uh, Well, we are working with uh, companies, first of all, so they can, uh, well, finding out with them, with themselves in this moment, the value of training in their Mm -hmm. people, why it's important to train them, uh, to become from an expense to an investment, and really to work in that value proposal has helped me to find myself also a, a lot of things that I need to go over because you think that you have everything you need to be an entrepreneur. But when you find out that <laughs> you have to run with discipline, mm-hmm. that in the past you have for your time that says, I began at seven and I finished at five, No, now you know what time you start, but you don't know when you finish. (laughs) And yeah, and you need to start to put in in your accountability, your assets, your losses, okay? Mm -hmm. 
and it's a game, but I am loving it. I was telling Lou that she is my friend also, that uh, it's been a hard time, but I really love in this time because mm -hmm. I think the main result for me, I am finding uh, skills, virtues that I didn't know I have them. Yeah. So I put it in practice. Uh -huh. And it's a time to find myself in areas that I didn't know. I love it. Even I am becoming a cooker too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, chef, oh, chef nice. <laughs> yeah. So I have to uh -huh. reorganize everything in my life. So I said I have to finish or to quit with some comfort things that I had in my home to take that money to, the, to my business. So I am by myself in my home with my little pet. So says, why not? Let's gonna start to learn how to cook. And I am loving to cook. I enjoying that, that oh. part of my life, I didn't know. And also I'm enjoying uh, to be by myself, doing the things of my home that I used in church to another person. Uh -huh. So I'm very happy with that. So I am learning a lot in this new stage of my life, Susan. We're always learning. And the second panel, it was about education. And we all concluded it's about learning. And we never stop learning. And also learning about ourselves. And I think it's also maybe about unlearning. So maybe before you never cooked. And now you become a chef. We come and we try out <laughs> your... <laughs> what is your favorite that you're cooking? Yucatecan food. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love yeah. to make a Yucatecan food, mainly in fish and turkey is what I love. Mm -hmm. I'll try the fish. Okay. Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to yes, show please. you one day, some of my dishes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. This gives us a, a good picture, right? From executive to entrepreneur. And all of a sudden, we're more alone. I think that's what I said in the other panel, when you're an entrepreneur, a CEO, you don't have like your a team, like friends or anything. So this is sometimes hard to make connections. And that I think that was also the reason why I wanted to have the whole day, different panels to get to know each other and open up my network of those fantastic 12 CEOs that we have here. And maybe we can find something that the others also have learned. Lucy, what do you think as an entrepreneur? Do you, you have been an entrepreneur for how many years? Probably about nine or 10 years before that, I was working for government. And it was in the United States, it's very important to have insurance. I don't know how it is in your mm -hmm in other places, but if you don't have insurance and you have four children and a husband, it's tough. Yeah. So I stayed working for uh, LA Unified School District for many, many, many years while my husband was building the company. Mm -hmm. And there came a time when he said, you know, you need to stop what you're doing there and you need to come here. So mm -hmm. it took him about 10 years to build this up on his own. You know, I would do very little because I was working, you know, honestly, uh, when I had my last child, I was 40 years old and I was working 12 hour days, but it wasn't out of um, being obligated. They were starting. I convinced them <laughs> that they needed to have, you know, their own newspaper because, you know, everybody is good about putting the school district down. Let's blow up what's good about it. Mm -hmm. And I had my office was right next to the superintendent of the mm -hmm. second largest school district in the United States. We had over 600,000 students at the time. Mm -hmm. So my office is next to him and I would come over and say, you know, we need our own TV station. We need to put out videos. We need to show them what's going on, not just talk about it. They had something called. Um, I think it was it was some kind of a show that was three minutes long. District Digest, that's what it was. And there was a woman that showed up and spoke in English about this is what's what's going on this month. And then she would say it in English, in Spanish, but very bad Spanish. And nosotros vamos a hablar de lo que va a suceder. And then, you know, you feel insulted, especially in a place where over 50% of the population is Spanish speaking. Mm -hmm. But how many times do all of us 
CEOs here in the panel, how many times have we sat back and just watched and just said, oh, my God, not I can do better, but if she could just hear my advice. Mm -hmm. But sometimes those women or those men felt challenged or felt like we were trying to take something from them or, oh, she's saying this because she wants to take my position. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of um, years amongst us three where we have just sat there, the four of us, and listened to other people have their ideas and not put us forward or put our ideas forward and not say it was ours. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I had several times, you know, my supervisor say, I have this great idea. And you're sitting there going, wow, that was my idea. But so you, you learn and you know what you learn, like what they were talking about in the second panel, you learn not to be that person. You know, every time somebody's rude, mean, takes something from me or, or does me wrong, all it really teaches me is I don't want to be that. Mm -hmm. I had an amazing example, which was my mother. And Probably growing up, I, I didn't realize it because you mm. don't, right? We're all, we've all been daughters. We were like, oh, mom's always going to be there. But then you get to a certain age and you say, wow, this woman taught me to be independent. I don't know how old I was when she said, don't rely on a man ever. You need to rely on yourself. You need to be self-dependent. And I'm thinking, well, she's married and she's happy. Why is she saying that? My mom knew that sooner or later, you need to fall back on you. So I think that's one of the things that, um, that I, I try to lead with just the way Janine does, um, makes you feel comfortable. Yeah. Susan, I, I don't, I don't know about Katie, but I, I'm, I'm meeting Katie for the second time. So I'm really <laughs> excited. And I have a lot of, I think that we're going to connect because we're in a, in doing sort of the same thing, <laughs> but with you, Susan, you, you make, at least me, and I know a lot of the team when we were in women leadership and beyond, like, like you could do anything. You make us feel like we can do anything. And I think that is our task. I think that's the thing that we need to do for the girls, uh, the women, the, the next generation. We need to make some space. We need to listen because we have two ears, one mouth, as my brother-in-law <laughs> was saying to me yesterday. I told him we were doing this. His name is Rosendo. He's like, you have to say, you know, we have two ears and one mouth mm -hmm. to listen. So let's listen to that new generation because they think differently from us mm -hmm. and they have some really good ideas. Yeah. Wow. But you're here to do something. It feels like with the women, women leadership and beyond, we started something and we can continue and it doesn't have to be every year, but maybe somebody picks up one thing today, next year we do something else, but it's about supporting each other and helping each other. And Katie, support. Total yeah, support. yeah. And Katie, for you, you also moved from the US to a different culture and country. So, how was that for you? And then become <laughs> a mother of children who don't sleep, I heard, right? <laughs> How, how is that? And see, so she's the super mom. She's the super CEO. She moved to another country. What can we learn from you? <laughs> um, well, I, I mean, piggybacking off of what Janine and, and what Lucy just said, I, so much of my evolution was, you know, following the footsteps of giants and having a network to fall back on. Um, when I was just beginning my company, Suzanne, you were with me every step of the way. I mean, how many phone calls crying? I can't do this. And now I'm pregnant. And what am I supposed to do? I'm going to have a baby. And I have to stop working for three months. No. Um, it, it really was a huge learning process um, coming into myself from what I thought I was mm -hmm. as an executive, you know, working for a company and defining, having the chance to define finally what I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Lucy, I'm right there with you. I came off of a really difficult 
experience. And so I took that with me every step of the way. My company is five years old and I'm just now incorporating my first person (laughs) into my company. And so thinking about, you know, how do I want to set the culture and how do I want to set our, you know, our rules of engagement so that I don't repeat the experience that I had so that I can give her a good experience. Um, And also, one of the principles that I've really had to adopt, I'm a very kind of type A perfectionist personality, was the 80-20 principle. So if it was 80% there, you got to go with it. Because otherwise, I'm losing sleep, I'm losing time, I'm losing money by not launching something. And, you know, just live with the fact that there's going to be problems and try to fix them along the way. Um, and, and so I think that was, that's another thing that I learned moving from the United States to Argentina, which is just a wonderful country, but it's chaos. Every day is chaos. Going to the post office or the grocery store is chaos. Um, and so learning to embrace that a little bit and, and roll with it, you can't fight it. So you have to go with it. Very wise words, right? When you move from one culture to the next, it's all about, I think it's about adapting. And then you learn so much about yourself. And a lot of people they always say, oh, yeah, traveling to Argentina is nice. It's different when you go on a vacation than when you live there for the time. All right. Yeah. I love Argentina. Because <laughs> I travel, <laughs> I just visit and then I come back. But it's just so beautiful. I love it. it yeah, it is. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a wonderful place to live, especially when you live outside of the big cities. Um, the, the nature that we have here and the diversity mm-hmm. of activities to do. And I think that's another thing that I really had to learn was to close the computer, turn off the phone, go outside, spend quality time with my kids and my family, um, you know, and, and Monday will be Monday. <laughs> I like that. I also have a, a rule, maybe not this past weekend, but Sunday, I do not open up the computer. This has helped me. I mean, I check my phone quickly, but I do not open up my computer. Janine, what do you do to, it's about self-care, right? What do you do? You cook well, or I'm what do you do? <laughs> I will be honest. Normally, I just, because I love what I do. That's my passion, one of my passions. So in the past, and Lou knew it. I had to work on Sundays. And I not disagree to working on Sunday. But also I've learned that we need a space for us. We need time for us. Is the time when we rest, our mind can go away and go back and to mm-hmm. see and focus again in what we are doing mm-hmm. and to rectify the past. So whatever I have to do normally for me from Saturday at 5 p.m. until Monday at eight o'clock in the morning, my phone is just for friends calls and I'm trying to skip even the social network, Facebook and that's and Instagram. That's time that I want to take for read, to take a wine, a good book and a glass of wine, go to the beach, suspend with the nature. It's time to be with myself. Mm-hmm. And I'm learning after this uh, two years. I remember a year ago when I was talking with you, says Susan, I knew that this would be hard, but I didn't know how hard there would be. And says, take a step back and go back. We need to do it. And I also remember you told me, make a list because that experience is something that you will be able to deliver to the other people in the future. And I am making that list, but something that I learned that to be in the shape I want, I need to take time for myself and rest. So, and that's why I am working so hard from Monday at eight o'clock to Saturday at 5 p.m. But after that, it's time for me. Yeah, right. that's my new rule. Yeah. Self-care, yes. We like that, yeah. And Lucy, mm-hmm. you mentioned, yeah, four children. 
and you're the president, CEO, and you're the busy person. And how do you juggle everything? I I have a right hand who is my husband, and it's it's really important. You really have to like that guy because <laughs> you wake up, you see his face. You go to work, there he is. <gasps> and then uh, he's there for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then at <laughs> night, he's there too. So, so you really have to have a good relationship and, and, and respect for each other's um, mm -hmm. abilities yeah. because there are some things that he's very good at. I was listening to Suzanne, um, uh, the STEM what Dr. is the last name? Dr. Dr. Z. Dr. C. Yeah. And, you know, you have to make friends with the things you dislike the most. What do I mean? Not my husband. I mean, <laughs> numbers. I, I said to myself, I'm not a numbers person. And whenever the girls would come to the house, my daughters would come home and go, oh, my God, I got such a bad grade in my math. I go, honey, it's OK. I'm bad at math. You're bad at math. It's not our thing. Well, listening to Dr. C, you know, just the way Janine taught herself mm -hmm. and you, mm -hmm. uh, Suzanne, and, and look at what happened with Katie and how she came. You know, I understand her when she says it's chaotic to go to the post office. Yeah. What she means, if I can interpret what you said there, is I just spent a month and a half in Bolivia. And it's chaotic because <laughs> because in a in America or, or in some places in Europe, you say, see you at five, they're there at 4.45 or at five. <laughs> uh, if you say to the construction guy, eh, venga usted a las cinco, he's going to be there at, you know, but not in Latin America, not in Mexico, not in any part of Latin America does that work. That's why when we do invitations, we say, you know, five uh -huh. o'clock American time. <laughs> because so it, it, it all is putting things in their place. And I think Katie's too young for this, but once you reach the 50 and over club, you're going to learn that <laughs> we become obsessed with having to be that age. Like this has to be like this. This has to be like that. And my mom taught me, don't sweat the small stuff. Iha, just don't worry about those little things because mm -hmm. it's going to ruin you know, like all those other things, Katie, that you said that you weren't going to be able to get done because you were so hyper focused on the one thing. So I think um, all of us are on the same page where we have to let go. Yeah. We have to learn to let go. And it's a learning process. It sounds ridiculous that at almost 60 years old, I'm learning. But like you said, Susan, in the beginning, if we stop learning, we stop growing. Mm -hmm. And every day is a learning process. Mm -hmm. So take what is great and leave behind, you know, what you think is not going to work for you. So for me, it just works to, you know, my kids are one of them left. OK, my oldest son is married uh, and gone. My other daughter just moved seven months ago on her own. She lives in, by the beach. And my younger one treats my house like it's her condo. You know, she comes in with all her friends, they have their drinks and they have the one designated driver. They go to where they're going and we're standing by. So I've learned to rely on my husband and he relies on me and he knows me well enough to know when, you know what, not right now. And what I mean by that is, you know, when I have something like this, I don't want to clean. I don't want to cook. I know it's quote unquote my job. But um, everybody can have sushi today because I'm doing this with Suzanne and the girls. So just put everything in place. And like all of you said, and the women before me, self-care, you know, um, nothing could be worse than, well, what, what, what happened with, with a pandemic. We thought this was the worst that's ever going to happen to us. And then, um, and then Ukraine happened. Mm -hmm. And so right now, what I'm seeing, I don't know what you're seeing in the different places where you live, but I'm seeing people with road rage. I'm seeing people, uh, my daughter, this is true and Jenny knows, came home day before yesterday to tell us that the cook at her place, the dishwasher committed suicide. I am seeing so much mental health issues so many mental health issues coming to the forefront 
-hmm. When you think we should be in lockstep with the physical and the mental, we are not. Mm -hmm. And you can look perfect from the outside, Mm -hmm. but what's brewing? And she said, I was talking to him and I said, you never know. There's a, there's a tornado going on Mm -hmm. in some Mm -hmm. people. So we just have to be, I'm, I'm like, really aware right now so how do I do it I'm just really aware of my kids Mm -hmm. I'm trying to do more listening because they're 25 they're 20 they don't want to hear me they want me as a sounding board and 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 I know my mom knows that I did that with her like I didn't listen so much when I was younger but I'm listening now (laughs) wow so wise and that self-care I think we can only explain to others, right? So what is working for us? And Katie, you're a perfectionist. This is all very good. I'm a perfectionist <laughs> too, but we have to let go sometimes. I mean, like, it's enough. It's good enough, right? So how can you tell yourself that it is good enough? What do you do? Oh, that's, a, that's a big question, Susan. Right? I think... Um, I think what I had to develop, I come off as really self-confident, but I didn't trust myself. Uh, so if I was starting a new program or launching whatever, I, I was always thinking in all of these nitpicky little details and, oh, it's going to be terrible. And so flipping that mindset and mm-hmm. saying, I believe this is a good idea. Mm-hmm. I believe this program will help people. Are there things I'm going to need to change? Yes. Um, and then, you know, kind of, and I don't have a, a, a partner in the business or a colleague or real sounding board to say, Hey, that was great. So then I have to be my own sounding board and say, Katie, what went really well? And, and kind of sit down and reflect. Um, I still use a paper planner. Uh, I love my planner and I have one and it seems so silly, but at the end of each week to write down a couple of of accomplishments or things to celebrate, even if it's just the small stuff. um, But I don't do it every week, but you know, I, I try to do it when I'm feeling especially down or especially stressed about something and, you know, and, and trust in myself. And, and kind of build up my own confidence mm. in that. And then for self-care, as a mom of two very small children, my oldest is four and my youngest is a year and a half. Um, they're sick all the time. <laughs> they're just sick all the time. Um, I've started Thursday mornings. Is my, it's my responsibility-free morning. Um, and it came at the sacrifice of working and earning more money. And, you know, I think you can always earn more money. And to me at this point in my business and in my life, those three hours from nine to 12 o'clock on Thursday morning are worth more than any course that I could offer or any program that I could offer. Uh, so that has become my newer, newer self-care strategy is, I leave my house like you, Lucy. My husband is in charge. Mom is gone. Good. And I go to a cafe and I read a book or or I do whatever I want. um, But it's a responsibility free morning. Yay. Well, congratulations. right? And I think I put you a little bit on the spot with like what you do, but you shared great nuggets, right? Like have something. Uh, we, we heard from Holly, like act, after action, reflection. So what went well? What can I improve? And just take that time. And Dr. C would probably help us, but there is a neural pathway that when we write something down, there is a connection between the brain and writing it down rather than to have it on the phone. So because on the paper, you see the paper again and it's there Because if you put it in a computer or even on a voicemail, it's not the same. You might forget. But if you see it on a paper, like apparently what I said to Janine, make a list, it is there and you can see it and you can revisit it. And 
Katie, we're here. So if you ever need something, just send us a message. <laughs> don't, don't, please don't be alone, right? So I think as a, as a solo entrepreneur, it's so important. That's why I wanted to have this day and I will also start circles, but it's, it's in the productions. It's not that easy to, in a way, we, we have people who want to come and then they're like, I don't have time. I don't have time. I'm like, okay, but you need to make that time. When is the right time? There is never the right time. I think we just need to carve out that time. Let's say every Wednesday, seven o'clock, whatever time it is where you are, that's when you are, the phone is off. Everything is off. You come to your circle to rejuvenate and to recharge your batteries. I think if, if I could pass any kind of um, helpful tip to the women coming after after us or with us or however you want to say it is just that it took me a really long time to learn that. And um, those of you who know me know that I the breakfast the this go to the gym, no matter what at seven and church and the girls had to have their bows just on it. And it, you know, it wasn't my husband being demanding. It was me. Mm. And, and I was the one that was forcing myself to do this because my mom was so good with me, I needed to be that good or, or even, you know, it's, it's on me. It's not on anybody else. So the thing I've learned the most and what I would like to pass on to, to the next generation is do self-care because if you're not okay, things are just going to come out lousy for you that day. It's kind of like going to make a souffle and you're feeling like crap and you're feeling terrible. That's not going to come out good. Mm -hmm. No one's going to want to eat it. <sighs> and so you, you just need to be in that whole flow. And we can't be in that flow all the time because mm -hmm. since we, by the way, this is the first time I'm in a panel with all female CEOs. I have to say, it's like I, half of me wants to cry. This is amazing. This is not representative of our world. Um, and I'm just so happy. And, and, and this is a big day. I mean, for some people, Christmas is the biggest day. Easter is the biggest day or, or, or Rosh Hashanah. You know, for me, because I believe so much in all this, is that this is one of the big days for me for women, for all of us, our daughters, and all of us included. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, it is big. And we need to celebrate it. And we need to make the time. I'm working on a deadline. And I said, um, I, I'll have everything ready after this event, because I'm like, I'm not multitasking five minutes here, five minutes there. This is my day. And you know what the person said? It's okay. So sometimes That's a good we person. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And it's a man. So we have to also add that. <laughs> it's, it's okay to say no. And what I have learned, usually I would say no, or maybe. And I learned through a, um, mindfulness training, if I just say no, and don't add all the excuses and how my heart feels, people are accepting it. And I tried it out once. And I really I was I was shaken. I was like, oh my God, do you accept my no? Katie, if you just say no and then stop talking, you might be amazed how the other person is reacting. Try it out. Men do it all yeah. the time and it works for them. <laughs> Put it in your planner. It's time for you. <laughs> I am doing it. This is a good idea. Yeah. In my weekly planner, this time, this time, this time is with me. Yeah. For whatever I need And it to feels do, so good because I literally me. scratch it out, you know, and it just it <laughs> feels so good. Janine, I promise if you do it, and buy yeah. a nice planner, the colors that you want, and write with a nice ink or something. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And we come to almost the last few questions. We need to know the superpower because every other panel, I ask them, what is your superpower? Janine, what is your superpower? We know what it is. Well, I've heard the questions a couple of hours ago and I was uh -huh. thinking, what is my superpower? I think, uh, I was telling Lucy, yeah. I think my superpower is to support everyone, but I think she gave the good definition is to try to make everyone to feel everyone good. 
great wherever we are, in the situation we are, to be relaxed. But also, I think that one of the superpowers that I am learning after the pandemic time is to be resilient. Mm -hmm. I was the people that, I used to be the kind of people that I couldn't stand when the things wasn't like I wanted. And I'm learning to be flexible. Mm -hmm. And that has supported me a lot. So I think resilience and be a kind of kind of girl to support everyone. I think they are the two superpowers that are helping mm -hmm. me. Yes. And thank you for that. She called me up yesterday and when I was ready to say, I'll cancel everything. She said, it's going to be okay. We're with, we're, we are with you and we're helping you. So thank you so much. This is fantastic. You're welcome. I learned a lot from you, Janine. I, I learned also from... too. <laughs> I, I learned think we're all learning from, from each other, right? Lucy, what is your superpower? Yeah. My superpower has to be flexibility. It doesn't sound like a sexy word, but it really <laughs> is. Um, just to be able to, I heard someone in the panel before us, and, and I really agree with that. Be where you are. Sounds ridiculous, but listen to the words. Just be where you are. Be present. Mm -hmm. I'm learning. And I think that my superpower is to pass on to others. Just be where you are. You can't be everywhere. You can't fix everything. But make that person that you're talking to feel that they are the only person in the world. There's a bunch of people in that room moving and everybody has a drink in their hand. But when you're talking to that person and, and she's either spilling her guts out to you or talking about business. Um, just be where you are. That, I think that's my superpower, just to, to be right there with you. And, and like Suzanne says, meet you where you are, where you're at. Yeah, exactly. That's a very good one. Yeah, and you have wow. that. Katie, what is your superpower? What a, what a question. Um, <laughs> I have to say, I well, I think one of my superpowers really is networking. Um, I love bringing people together. I love sitting down and talking to somebody and thinking, you need to talk to Lucy and you need to talk to Janine and you need to talk to Susan. And um, that's one of my favorite things that with, with no ulterior motive other than mm -hmm you're a cool person. She's a cool person. You need to talk. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and I, I can be pretty shameless about that. And, <laughs> and I'm shameless about contacting people and talking to new people as well. Um, but I believe wholeheartedly in, you know, it, I think a lot of us are in industries where it can be really cutthroat and competition. Mm -hmm. And I try really hard not to look at people who do something similar to me are not competition. Uh, they can be colleagues also. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's enough, there's enough pie to go around for everybody. So mm -hmm. let's have fun and let's make the best of it. I like that. Let's have fun. I think that's, that's the one thing we sometimes forget a little bit, but I have to say, Janine, and again, I said, I learned, I learned a lot from you last year. She and her company organized like a virtual, what was it, a Christmas or end of the year get together? I think it began in November last year. Oh, the November. Well, November 2020. 20. And I have to say, oh, I'm tired. Let me just support them. It was so much fun. They did a virtual Jeopardy. They did like, we had to... Uh, kind of like a, a riddles like what movie is it you cannot talk but you had to describe it and all of it in Spanish so for me I loved a lot <laughs> it was so much fun so sometimes we forget and that's why I think throughout the day I also had a wonderful time laughing and I know Ana Vero, Anita they put some pictures together and in some of the pictures Everybody is laughing. Everybody's laughing, feeling good. So I think that's what I also want to spread to the world that everybody has some fun. And I want to thank everybody who came here, who is here, who is here where we are. And hopefully we can continue that. But thank you so much for 
all the great energy that you put in here and thank you. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Susan. Yeah, Because thank you. Because you take the, you, Susan. you took the flag this year <laughs> and we are going to build something right there for next okay. year. I'm okay. sure of that. Okay. Thank you, Susan, Hello. for including us. And we I feel honored to be part of this group. And I'm really, really happy that you did it. You did it. Oh, I did yeah. it. Okay. Congratulations. And I was great, I'm so happy to meet 